Hello and welcome to episode 222, that's triple two of Heroes of Handheld with Chris and Colin, the internet's premium handheld gaming podcast dedicated to all things handheld, mobile, PlayStation, uh, Nintendo, 3DS, 2DS, 3DS XL, 2DS XL, uh, DS, DSi, DS Lite, as well as the PlayStation, PlayStation Vita, PlayStation Portable, PlayStation Portable Gen 1, 2, 3, PlayStation Portable Go, uh, the Nokia N Gauge, the <laughs> Motorola V3 Razer, uh, the Nokia 3410, including the monkey puzzle game on there called Munkini. Uh, and the Sony Walkman. Colin, how are you? Chris, Chris, my man, how are you? How the devil are you on this lovely Wednesday evening? Sunny, I, spring evening or summer. It's not summer yet, is it? It's still spring, I think. In a word, I am sticky. Can uh, I Can I just ask yeah. you a question? Like yeah. You mentioned the DS and the DSi. So mm-hmm. if I remember rightly, the only difference between those two is that the DSi had a camera. Was that... Was that the the deal with that? Because I we had a DS, but we didn't have a DSi. Yeah, the DSi had a camera, and was that it? Was that the only difference? Was I think camera? they changed what the stylus was. Uh, let me look it up. Back it up. was I. Mm. We just I need DSi. to tell you, brain training on the DS was literally my jam. I was all over that. Yeah, it did have it had a camera built in. Uh, DSi sound, DSi camera. Oh, you could store music on it and do like music mixing and stuff. Did anyone do that? I so it wasn't. It wasn't like the old Nokia phones where the 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 ringtones on there were just beeps, and you could make your own. Did they actually have proper music on the DSI? That's yeah, you could, you could put in some sort of memory card to mess around with with but your busted albums and stuff. Your busted album or your muck fly room on the third floor. Classic. Top quality, top classic. Chris, I'm very excited. Don't know why. Is it because another week has gone by and we've got some great handheld gaming news to talk about? Yes, that's part of it. But also, in two days' time, is the release of Mario Aces. Oh, I'm frothy. I'm excited. Are you, you going to get it on Friday? I think I am because I've got some vouchers to use on the old Amazon. So I think I might actually do this. I'm tempted because the little teaser they gave me of the demo a couple of weeks ago really whet my appetite. And I told you that I woke up early the next day after playing it like all through the night thinking, you know what, I need to get back into some tennis. I need to get back on Bowser. I need to try and justify choosing Waluigi, even though he's terrible. And it wasn't there. It was taken away from me. And I've had a, a, a tennis racket shaped hole in my soul since this moment. So I think I might actually have to put down the cash or the vouchers to get it. Um, I might have a quick look on Amazon whilst we're talking to see how much they are saying it will be. So let's have a look. Mario thinks is Amazon. The big question is, whilst I'm looking, are, are you going to be getting it? Yeah, I'm going to get it on Friday. I'm so excited. And I'm re- what I'm really excited for £44 is... Pounds and 49 pence. And time now for Tied out for Colin to pretend that that isn't a good price That's and it's too expensive. Price. I'm just sound really that. optimistic. I think I think I got all three Mass Effect games for about twenty quid, but it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's Mario, so it's adding extra twenty quid on it. No, um, no, it's good. I, I'm, I'm keen. I'm very keen. Um, you know, normally I wait for reviews with games, but I think, I think we already know this is going to get great reviews because of how well received the uh, demo was. Obviously, the connectivity mm. issues were a bit uh, choppy at times, but I'm very excited to get open up these other options and the other game modes and um, to have a go at the story mode. So, yeah, dead keen. And also, next week is the release of the Insane Trilogy on Switch as well. Oh, my God, is it really? Next Friday. I am so keen on that as well. So it's a great time for games. And not only that, we're going to go straight into some Switch news because I saw you put this in the document. We have this document that me and Chris Feel throughout the week with new stories we see that we want to discuss on the podcast every week and there are two games coming to switch next week and one of them is one of my favorite games of recent years i absolutely love this game we've spoken about it on the podcast before and i know chris isn't as keen as i am but play dead they're bringing limbo to the nintendo switch as well as the um not the sequel but the spiritual successor inside as well two amazing games i've not played inside yet and i've heard so many good things about it got 10 out of 10 across the board a couple of years ago when it came out just as good as limbo cannot wait for those who don't know 
They are they're puzzle games. So basically, you're running forward, and there's obstacles, and you have to get through the obstacles, avoid death, you die multiple times. It may sound boring, but the art style, very unique. Limbo, in particular, is all silhouetted, so you're this little boy, and you've got to get through, like, jumping over spikes and spinny things. You go through factory settings. The music's really creepy. There's huge, massive beasts you've got to avoid, and it's really quite haunting as well. There's a backstory as well, which you sort of have to piece together yourself as, as um, you decide where you are and how you got into this limbo place. But And it ends on a bit of a sort of a cliffhanger. And it's one of the best games I've played in a long time. I was absolutely obsessed with it when I had it on my Xbox 360 about three, four years ago now. But now Chris is going to explain to me why I'm wrong and it's shit. Come on, Chris. No, I don't think it's shit. I'm really glad you... I... I look, Colin, <laughs> if you enjoy something, I'm never going to tell you you're wrong for enjoying something. And I think, like, right, I just because I didn't gel with them, uh, I am keen, like, inside, especially, looks like, uh, like something I would really enjoy. Mm. And uh, on, I think on Switch as well, that they, they do feel very much suited to that platform. Yeah. I mean, inside, I've not played inside yet. And I think from what I've seen, it's a very similar concept, but it's a, uh, more technically, the technical um, side of it in terms of the graphics and animation and stuff like that is a bit more advanced. It's not as um, black and white, literally, as Limbo was. But I'm very keen. Um, I don't know whether they're going to be released as a package together. I doubt it. It'll probably be two separate purchases. But, uh, I mean, free it, games... It might be that there's, like, a, a bundle with, like, yeah. a slightly cheaper price. You can see Maybe. that happening. I don't know if I'd do that, because I've played Limbo twice already on 360, so I'll probably not buy that again. But if you've not played Limbo before, it's definitely worth it. It is a lot of fun. Uh, it can be frustrating, but it's worth it. The rewards are very, very worth it by getting to the end. You get a huge um, feeling of satisfaction by getting to the end. And it's actually quite a haunting ending. In a way. I don't want to say any more than that, but it is quite... You know, these you maybe sort of not as not as depressing as the Binding of Isaac's ending, but something similar to that. Did you uh, finish the Binding of Isaac? No, I watched all the endings on YouTube. Right, of course, <laughs> I've never actually, I've never played the Binding of Isaac, but there's so many different endings. And it's very very sad. It's not it's not not a happy game. That uh, if you're looking for a fun time, maybe don't play the Binding of Isaac. I heard a rumor that Collins never actually finished a game. He's just watched everything on YouTube. Chances are I probably watched the Limbo ending on YouTube before I actually finished it myself. I'm not even joking about that. I watched the ending of Mass Effect 3 before I'd even played Mass Effect 1 because I thought, I'm never going to play these games. Oh, boy, was I wrong. Um, which color did you choose? Anyway, uh, so, yeah, I'm excited because Mario Tennis this Friday, Insane Trilogy, Crash Bandicoot, which I'm so excited for next Friday. I've deliberately held off buying that on my... Um, well, actually, I don't think I could get it because it was on PlayStation 4. But um, I deliberately said I won't buy it on 360 or, no, sorry, Xbox One um, because I want it on my Switch. And I think, you know, the ability to have it portable would be great. On my PlayStation Vita, God bless its soul, I downloaded all the original Crash Bandicoot games, the PS1 classics, and being able to play those on the go was just amazing. So having it on Switch in an enhanced mode is going to be great. Can't wait for that. And also uh, Inside and Limbo out next week as well. I believe they're out on the 28th, which is next Thursday. Thursday? So we've got a game. For, yeah, it's uh, worldwide week. June 28th. Nice. So we've got Mario Aces on Friday. We've got Limbo and Inside on Thursday. And then the Insane Trilogy next Friday as well. So it's a great time to be a Switch owner. Very exciting. And then Smash in December. Yay. Mm. And then go... Pokemon, Eevee, and Pikachu in November. Yay. Are you going to get Smash? We can already talk yeah, about it. I think, I think I am. I've told you, I've never taken the plunge into Smash Bros. before. I think this is the time. I mean, I want to be a part of Smashcast, so I need to buy it and uh, play it. I, I, I don't know what Smashcast is. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I remember I used to do IndyCast, and I used to do it like half naked because I just had a shower. Anyway, uh, right, let's move on. Let's talk about Pokemon Go. Shall we talk about the news from the world of Pokemon Go? A couple yeah, of get things. Guess who uh, Guess who spent some time on Pokemon Go this weekend? Oh, you're back, are you? Oh, he's looking for something. What are you looking for? Oh, you, the thing is, I just grabbed my phone. Let me the guess, because was... the community day, were you back on that? Yeah. No, yeah. I missed the community day. I just played on Sunday because I was right. playing with a friend who wanted to get a raid pass, so we were going to some parks. I will. Here's the thing, Colin. You don't need to play. I know, obviously, you're with this person anyway, but you don't need to be with someone to have a get a raid pass. Do you? No, I, I know, but like he oh. wanted one, so I, just, I played yeah. with him. Yeah, sure. Here's the thing, on my old phone, 
not much space. Pokemon Go is a big app. Didn't like to download it. Also, zapped all the battery. Yeah. No fun for anyone. Yeah. New phone. Yeah. Big beefy battery, big beefy internal hard drive. Pokemon Go is back on the menu. Woo! I was like that as well because I had it on my old crappy iPhone five or whatever it was, and it re- or six, and it just could not cope. But now I've got the like one of the latest models. It runs like a dream, and I've loved it ever since. I'm glad you're back on it because Chris soon we'll be able to add each other as friends. I know Woo! this friends thing is really interesting. Like I, really? I, mm. I read that and I was like, this is kind of what the game. Should have been two years ago when it first yeah, came out. Yeah, it should have been, but also like it's good that it's that it's got it now. Like mm. better, better late than never. So if you missed this, they announced this uh, earlier on in the week, and they're calling it the friendly update. And this is a update which will make way for friends trading and gifting in Pokemon Go. Yeah, uh, the friends feature will start running out to trainers later this week, allowing you to connect this from their website, connect with real life friends, keep track of their invention Pokemon Go, send items, earn bonuses, and even trade Pokemon. In order to add a friend, you must first ask them to share trainer codes with you. Similar uh, to then, Nintendo. It's a very similar yeah, thing, isn't it? Enter trainer codes to do that. Uh, when you spin discs at gyms or Pokestops, you might get a gift. You can't open gifts, but you can send gifts to friends who can open gifts. Gifts can uh, contain eggs that have Alolan forms of Pokemon, amongst other things. There's also bonuses for if you uh, go to gym battles with your friends and raid with your friends as well. Build your friendship level by trading Pokemon. Uh, you get like certain bonuses. You get more Stardust. All trades are powered by Stardust. Some trades require more Stardust than others. Uh, and then the more you trade with people, the cheaper it gets to trade Pokemon. I mean, certain Pokemon you can't trade, like Shinies and Legendaries. How fast are you for trading, Colin? Trading, not so much, because I would say I'm a bit of a lone wolf when it comes to Pokemon Go. I don't really do the team raids or anything like that. For me, it's just the case of like doing the, well, now doing the professor's missions, uh, catching Pokemon to fill up my Pokedex and getting new Pokemon and hatching eggs and things like that. But I really like the idea of actually adding friends on there, you know, and being able to see what other people are doing and what level and what they're up to. I like that whole social idea of it. So it'd be cool to add you and then see that your well, I don't know what it's going to tell you. It might tell you who your Pokemon buddy is, what level you are, and who you've just caught or whatever. But in terms yeah. of what else it will tell you, it'd be interesting to see. Um, I mean, terms, I'm glad that they're actually adding this in because, um, you know, it's something they promised for quite a while now. Trading's been like one of the things that I think they initially promised it back when it first came out back in July uh, 2016. So it's glad that's finally coming. I have to say, the other day, it was actually nice to see. I was walking home, uh, walked past the gym that I normally try and um, I normally try and take over as I go to and from work. So I normally walk past it quite early in the day and there's the Pokemon, either the gym's really weak or I can add my Pokemon to it. So it's all good. But as I was walking home, there was a raid going on. There was about, no, no, no um, lie, about 20 people all stood there doing this raid. And it made me like, just appreciate the community feel of Pokemon Go once again. It does uh, really feel like a summer game, doesn't it? Like I, I know I say that all the time, but when it's when it's winter, I'm so less motivated to play it than like on those long summer afternoons. Um, yeah. Yeah. Interestingly, looking, I'm looking at the screen grabs for the trading thing, and the Stardust costs uh, do drop like quite heavily. Um, so if you want to trade with a uh, a legendary for a legendary with someone who you're like one level out of four friends with, it'll cost you a million stardust. Whoa. Whereas if you're four star level, so four friend levels with them, it'll cost you 40,000. So it obviously drops off quite a lot. Um, I mean, it does look really good. I you don't know how it? useful oh, it yeah. will it will be uh, i suspect it will be mainly useful for completing the regional um yeah. pokedex yeah especially you know, like i hope that you kept got, like uh, an american one a north american only one or something yeah exactly like i hope you kept hold of your mr mimes because you can you know the current <laughs> finally finally it's time to cash that check in um you can have also my have... if you want it i'll give wow. you my across or my tauros uh, they also announced the um Pokemon Go July Community Day is going to be Squirtle themed. July the 8th, it takes place. Increase Squirtle spawns. Eggs hatch quicker. Uh, evolve to Blastoise to get a exclusive move, but the move is TBA. 
Uh, Pokemon Go Hub is reporting it's most likely Hydro Cannon. Yeah. Um, but there's nothing on the actual Pokemon Go website about the move. But uh, yeah, it's quite, you know, it's a, it's a nice time to play. And the Water Festival's on at the moment. There's loads of Water Pokemon out. I don't really know what they do, but that's been quite fun. I think, like, because of the announcement of Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu, it sort of has piqued a lot of people's interest in Pokemon Go again. Like, people who want to play those games on Switch sort of are thinking that they need to get into Pokemon Go to have access to more Pokemon. Mm. And someone at my work, actually, they're a big gamer, but they've never played Pokemon Go, but they have especially deliberately downloaded Pokemon Go now in, in preparation for Let's Go uh, Pikachu and Eevee. So they're now into it and getting all leveled up and stuff. So, yeah, it's good. Is that your end or my end? Uh, your end. It it is. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's a nice time to to be to be involved in it. And yeah, like you say, I think um, as they as they build Go as a brand, it feels more worth investing time in. I just I just want to get a Mewtwo raid. That'd be so sick. Yeah. I oh, I haven't said I've progressed finally in my special research tasks to get Mew. Oh, I, I, I was stuck on one for a couple of months where I had to catch a Ditto and catch 10 ghost Pokemon. Caught a Ditto like a month ago. So hard getting the ghost Pokemons. Oh my God. They were like nowhere. The only time you get them was like between 8 a.m. No, between like 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. or something like that. But I managed to catch two Ghastlies uh, yesterday. So I finally on to the next stage. So now I had to reach level 25, which I've already, already got. But I've got, uh, got to evolve a Magikarp and battle in 10 raids. Mm. So uh, annoyingly, I've only just evolved a Magikarp about last week. So that's really a bit annoying. So I've got to do that again. Luckily, where I am near the sea, there's actually quite a lot of Magikarps that spawn all the time. So uh, yeah, hopefully it won't take too long. Mm. Very excited. I'm six of eight. So I'm almost there. Almost there. All good. And if you were magic up, if you use those berries as well to get double candy, you should get there a lot quicker. Oh, I've been doing that like a madman. Mm. No joke. Uh, Can I just quickly mention some awesome footwear that's been announced? Yes. So these are actually pretty cool. A couple of months ago, we announced how uh, Sony and PlayStation were releasing a version, a Air Jordan shoe like a high top shoe and it was really cool because it had the tick on it um it had like the symbols like the triangle the square the x and it glowed in the dark and it was really nice but obviously microsoft don't want to miss out either and surely probably because nike wants to be seen to be loving all the brands they've released or not released they've revealed these air jordans which are xbox branded and they do look really nice there's two main features of them obviously they're the trademark xbox green the tick on the side is green, uh, the sole is green, the top is green, there's black laces. It looks very nice. But the two main things that stand um, stand out from it is in the sole, if you look down into the shoe, there's the Xbox logo, which is a nice shiny green color, and it also glows in the dark as well. So it looks very nice. There's no details as to when it's going to be getting a worldwide or a wide commercial release. At the moment, the only place it's been seen is with the Xbox reps and the Microsoft reps at E3. They're all wearing these shoes. So uh, I think it looks pretty cool. I mean, out of the two, I probably prefer the Sony one just because I think the tick's really cool on the Sony one with the blood light blue. Um, but it's a nice little shoe. I mean, it's, I wish they'd done a bit more to make it a Xbox, you know, an Xbox branded shoe because, I mean, it's sort of like a blink and you'll miss it. I mean, unless you're looking right down into the sole of the shoe, you won't see the Xbox logo. And um, does it really matter if shoes glow in the dark? Don't know. I remember when I was younger, I used to have shoes. Every time I stepped, they'd flash flashlights. But That's, I'll tell you this for free, Colin. Yeah, go on then. I've got a pair of shoes which sort of glow in the dark. Sort of. Which glow my in the dark. Toy Story ones with the aliens on. Oh yeah. So they don't glow. It's it's weird. It's weird. I can't explain it. But what I will say is they're very annoying in the cinema. Yeah, I can imagine. Oh, nice. What were those Sony ones? I have to remind myself. Wasn't there yeah, like there was you could do nice... push a button where it would like. Lights yeah, up. and they did a more recent batch of them as well, but they're very, apparently really yeah. hard to get hold of. Oh, so oh yeah, on the on the base of the shoe, they've got the X, the square, the circle, and yeah. the triangle at the back of it. It's got the, the PlayStation ones are so much nicer than the Xbox ones, honestly. Like they're so like you you know as soon as you see one of those shoes that they are PlayStation branded, but the Xbox one it's quite tough to see. But they look nice. They're nice anyway. It's good that they're doing this. Um, but I saw a comment. And this is an article from Kotoku um, where I saw 
uh, these shoes. Someone's put a comment on this article about the Xbox shoes, which I thought was quite funny. Uh, this guy put, this just in, Sony will not allow you to wear a PlayStation shoe on your left foot while wearing an Xbox shoe on your right shoe. Microsoft <laughs> has confirmed they are fine with the practice. I thought that was quite, <laughs> quite relevant. Ho, ho, ho. There you go. Thank you, uh, Luke Plunkett. Very funny. Right, uh, let's move on. What else are we going to be talking about? What's going on? <laughs> uh, I want to talk about Double Fine, whose games Grim Fandango and Broken Age are announced as coming to the Nintendo Switch. Uh, Double Fine are obviously... if it, Tim It's Tim Schafer's company. Uh, if you're not across Double Fine, if you're not across Broken Age, it was one of the first big uh like kickstarted games um and grim fandango is this kind of day of the dead uh de la los muertos aren't you a big skeleton solving crimes is that grim fandango? yes yeah very keen um and if you you go on the twitter there's not too much about it they've not got a date or anything but hopefully 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 uh it will be soon really like the look of these games and i think they'll really fit on switch as well i love you know double fine are like consistently excellent in their games yeah so but that's keen um they're very keen people were very keen when grim fandango came out on vita all those years ago so yeah it's they're just they're just very well loved aren't they yeah um but colin but colin yes but colin that's that's so far away i want to know about a little game Called Shadow Gun Legends, which I'm just watching gameplay for. It looks insane. So this is going to be free on Nintendo Switch, and this is a game I hadn't heard of before. It's a uh, first-person shooter, uh, and the developer of this, Mad Finger Games, usually only does uh, brings their games to iOS and Android. So I think this is a first from delving into the uh, world of console gaming. But uh, it's going to be free on Switch. Uh, apparently, it's visually stunning. Uh, it took them just two days to port it to the Nintendo Switch, and that's because it was built using the Unity engine, which is nice. Um, as I said, all their previous games have been mobile exclusives, um, aside from the original Shadow Gun, which was released on Android. Oh, my God. Do you remember the Ouya? Remember the Ouya? That, you remember the Ouya, yes. That's funded through Kickstarter, and then like people bought it and realized it's actually a bit crap, and it took ages to get them all out and took them like months and stuff like that. Oh, so there you go. So they've brought games to consoles before, if we can really call Ouya a console. Uh, so Shadow Gun Legends is already available on iOS and Google Play. Uh, it's already got a good critical reception. It boasts over 500 weapons, more than 1,000 pieces of armor, uh, which can be earned in raid battles. And the developer has stated that it is committed to putting the player first with an in-game live streaming system, uh, total transparency of the game, an update development, and a bulletproof anti-cheat system. There you go. So there's going to be cop missions and raids. There's a thrilling story uh, and real-time player versus player team battle. So I'm up for this. Uh, let me see if we've got a release day. It didn't say when it's coming out. I don't think it's out now. It's been confirmed. But I don't think it's out now. There's no release date on here. Regardless, it looks good. I mean, the graphics for it, the gameplay looks really cool as well. Um, but yeah, it's, as I said, it's a game that I hadn't really been aware of. I don't think it's the sort of game you probably play on your mobile phone. Maybe the screen's a bit too small, but it's nice that you can play us on Switch now and shows how the Switch is really appealing to all these developers considering they've never bought a... Well, I, they bought a game to the Ouya, but they've never bought a game to a proper console before. So long may this continue. And it's free, people. It's free. Free. I can get behind free games. This has got co-op as us, so we can play together. Yeah, you, you, are you. Have you got your Switch nearby? Can you have a look and see if it's available now? Uh, I don't. It's in the living room. Yeah, same. Mine's, mine's docked at the moment. It's docked. Yeah, mine's docked. I've been playing too much Pokemon Quest. I need to charge. Oh no! I need to get. I need to play some Fortnite. I downloaded it last week, but I've not actually played Fortnite yet. So I need to give it a go on Switch. Maybe we could play together. Oh, maybe. Uh, uh, maybe we could like go into a forest and put our switches together, and then we could like move between screens. Uh, anyway, uh, last I'm going to give you the last bit of news before we do group chat. Right. I'm I'm really interested in this. Nintendo and the Disney Channel have announced they're working together on Disney Presents the Nintendo Switch Family Showdown. This is from Nintendo.com. Uh, if you're a family that loves Nintendo and wants to show off your skills in various Nintendo games, you can enter for a chance to win the Disney Channel Presents 
uh, Nintendo Switch Family Showdown contest will be one of four families to compete in an epic Nintendo Switch showdown. It's going to feature on the Disney Channel, Disney XD, uh, which is digital, and will stream on Disney Now app this summer. Uh, families will be pitted against each other in fun and friendly competitions on a Nintendo themed set. Uh, a series of challenges from games like Odyssey to My Odyssey, Marathons, Aces, and Just Dance 2018. Families can apply for the contest by submitting a video up to one minute in length explaining why they're the ultimate Nintendo fans. Select families will win a trip to Los Angeles uh, to meet the Disney Channel stars and compete in Showdown for to win any more prizes. Uh, contest begins at 12 p.m. on the 18th of June and runs until the 1st of July. So you've not got long to get your entries in. Uh, it had to be an American person, one entry per person, sponsored by Disney. Uh, looks good. Looks good. I'm quite interested in this because I think it's really interesting that Nintendo are working so closely with Disney. Like that's quite a that's quite a strange move for them. Yeah, it's strange that two big companies. Well, I know Disney don't usually like working with other big companies, so that's strange. Like, and Nintendo are completely separate entities to Disney as well. Mm. Like they're not linked in any way, so it's nice. Um, you know, Nintendo are a nice company, and Disney are. You know, I love Disney, as you know, but I, I can't. I can't say that their business practices are potentially that nice. They rule the world. They rule oh, yeah, most of the entertainment industry. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, this is like, quite an interesting show. And it is it is the type of show that I would watch if I was, uh, you know, I mean, I'll probably give it a go anyway, but it give is it the type of show that I'd be obsessed with if I was younger. Yeah. Nice. Mum, we have to get on the Teddy Swift family showdown. Please, mummy. That's what you do. You can gather around the telly and do that. Cool. We look forward to that. Should we do group chat? Yes. Let's do group chat. So group chat is the feature and the time of the show where we put a question out to everyone and we want responses. We get, we have a week to get our answers together, gather our thoughts, and then we come back and we deliver and we share our thoughts with each other. So the question last week was, what was your favorite E3 moment? And we had a few correspondents on this. Do you want to do the honors, Chris? Yes. So we had a message from Phil who said that apparently he gets all his E3 news via us, so he's going to go for the Smash Bros news. I think that's really, A, really cool that someone gets all that E3 news through us. B, I think it's really interesting that <clears throat> of all the announcements, it's Smash Bros that's the cream that's risen to the top. Yeah. That was um, the big one a lot of people were waiting for. Uh, hardcore gamers were waiting for that. I, I literally, I've watched that trailer so many times, the everyone's here trailer. It is amazing. But where is Waluigi? That no, that no. is annoying, <clears throat> and I'll tell you why. Right, because uh, a lot of people have been harassing Sakurai on Twitter about Waluigi not being a playable character. Waluigi, to the point where he's had to start blocking people. <laughs> so it's all fun and games, but don't be a dick. All right, he you. Should. He it's not our fault. He wears blue. I'm I like blue. It's one of my favorite colors. Not my fault. He looks good in blue shorts as well. He's very purple. Uh, I'm colorblind. I say it's blue. <laughs> uh, we've also had uh, Emma said that the favorite moment for her is when the Just Dance Panda came on during the Ubisoft conference. Did you see this? I didn't. I'm going to have to Google this right now. It was amazing. It was a very long choreographed video featuring a dancing panda to advertise Just Dance 2018, 2019. <laughs> okay, I see him. The Just Dance Panda. There you go. E3. Very keen. Colin, what was your favorite E3 moment? My favorite moment was how Microsoft didn't do a terrible thing. They actually did a good conference. Hang on, hang on. It, shut, no, shut one, no one shut was it. bashing it. No one. You you know how you were no just talking about how Waluigi wears little blue shorts? No one. Yeah. <laughs> just as you're sat here and you're wearing little blue shorts. I know. Well, actually, they're I purple. see where you get it from they're now. They're purple, not oh, blue. Oh, they're purple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Cyberpunk. The new um, uh, Gears of War, the new Halo, all look pretty Just spiffy. one. Pete, just one. Uh, uh, oh, oh, the new Gears of War. No, uh, Halo. Ah, cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. That's the one. And the, the brief five-second clip of Insane Trilogy in the Nintendo one. That was my highlight. Frothy. I just, want, I just want the Insane Trilogy in my life. Can you tell? Big fan. Big fan. And I want the Ignite, Reignited Spyro one as well. Go wait till September for that. Not keen. Well, are, you gonna down are you going to download them or are you going to buy them physical? Uh, I don't know. I think with Amazon, can't you like buy them 
buy download codes for them. I know you could with Xbox games. Yeah, I don't know if you can for Switch. Mm, well, we'll see. Whichever, because I've got vouchers to use for Amazon, so yeah, whichever. Might be, have to be physical. Let's get physical. Physical. I think with um, Insane Trilogy, I'll probably just buy that from the store, to be honest. But we'll, we'll see about Mario Aces. All good. What was your favorite moment? My favorite moment was probably... I think the Smash Bros. reveal was really good. But for me, just for unexpectedness, my favorite moment was the Star Fox bit in the Ubisoft conference. Yeah, you were dead keen for that. It was so cool. And it was like, not really deservedly so, because the game doesn't look that... For anyone who's not, who wasn't watching, um, it's a game coming to Ubisoft. It's like a toy to life spaceship game. And they played a trailer and talked about it. And then they played another trailer which featured Star Fox. And I'm like... I'm not that keen for it, but just when that happened, I was just like, oh, yeah, this is going to be really cool. That Star Fox, I like him. He's a fox from the stars. I'm keen. I know. I, but then I don't even think I'm going to play the game, but I am keen. Well, there you go. That sums it up. I'm dead keen, but I'm not going to play it. Yeah. Not Star Fox, I'm not going to play it, though, after that. I think that's it for group chat. I think we're going to change the feature next week. We've discussed, we've had some discussions, some boardroom discussions. About the yeah, we're going to put in group chat on rest for a little while. Mm. Uh, we'll, I think we'll bring, we'll probably bring you back at some point. It'd be good to have rotation. Are we I'm doing, not, yeah. we're, we'll, we'll reveal our feature next week. Yeah, we'll reveal it next week. Look at you flexing your muscles. Oh, what a tease. That's oh, a pretty, pretty, pretty oh. right there. Oh, look at these bad boys. Oh, I had to um, I had to call the RSPCA because I found an injured swan. Oh, and um, Colin, yeah, uh, I'll see you on the courts for tennis. Yeah, oh boy, I'm so keen. Are we actually going to play together? Are we actually going to play together? Yeah, we... let's let's play this weekend. I'm going to be Waluigi. You're going to be Peach. Absolutely, and I'm going to wreck you. You probably will, because I'm shocking in it. I was Absolutely, awful. I know. <laughs> anyway, thank you for listening, everybody. We'll be back next week, same time, same place. This time next week, Mario Tennis will be in our hands, and we'll be very excited about that. So if you want to contact us to let us know your thoughts on what we've discussed this week and any games you're looking forward to, you can email us, heroesofhandheld at gmail.com. You can go to heroesofhandheld.wordpress.com, go to the Contact Us section, Fill out the form and that'll come straight to us. You can tweet us at Handheld Podcast. You can find us on Facebook, Google Plus. Just Google Heroes of Handheld Podcast and you will find all our information there. You can even leave us a review on iTunes and Stitcher or find us on any good podcatching app or website because we are all over the interwebs like a bad rash. So, Chris, thank you very much, Hi. sir. You've been a, it's been a delight. It's been a pleasure. Half an hour to Love Island. Great. <laughs> Are you what, was the, uh, what was the Spain Iran score? Do you want to make a guess before I look it up? I've been watching it. Spain won a lot. <laughs> uh, is it still going? Yeah, oh, Iran, Iran, Iran just scored, but it was disallowed for some reason. Oh. I don't know why. So I need to bloody, find it. Bloody Valve Anti Ref or whatever that thing stands for. Bloody VIR. VAR. Damn you, VARS. Sounds like a disease. Thank you. Where's, for hey, hey, Colin. Whoa, Colin. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, yeah. Where's Jamie Vardy? Is he not playing anymore? No, he was just on the bench on okay. uh, Monday. He's having a party, I hear. That's what I heard. Do you remember when he scored that last minute goal against... Um, no, it wasn't him. Do you remember he scored against Wales, though? And it was like the best day ever when we beat Wales oh, two, one, so two years cute. ago. And then we lost to Iceland and everyone realised how shit we were. Anyway, thank you for listening, everybody. All oh, best of luck to Germany, Chris. Hope they do well. Thank you. For your, best of luck to your boys as well. Boys in Iceland, all 300,000 of them. Oh, boy. We'll be back next week. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.